How you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to Nice, in fact. Arrived this afternoon, just been strolling around the city, looking forward to Wales, Portugal tomorrow, and then England, Japan on Sunday, which is what I'm going to be looking ahead to in this video. England have named their team for the game. Couple of changes from that which beat Argentina last weekend and some interesting things to get into, in particular in the back row. So make sure you drop a comment down below what you make of this England team and what you want to see from this England team. They've got one win but what now for the rest of this World Cup? What do you want to see from them in the match against Japan? You can whack it in the comment section down below. But let's get into it. Forgot to mention in the intro as well, if you can like the video and subscribe to the channel, then that's always massively appreciated. But let's get ourselves into this England team. Many of you would have seen it already. Starting in the front row, there's a couple of changes at prop. Uh, Marla comes in. So does Carl Sinclair. Jamie George is the hooker. It's a Toe Jay and Chesham in the second row. Uh, Courtney Laws... And Ben Earl continuing the back row. Obviously, Curry got himself sent off. It's Lewis Ludlam that comes in. So Ludlam is at eight and Earl shifts to open side flanker. Mitchell and Ford, the nine and ten again. Two Alangian and Marchant, the centres. Daly, May and Stewart, the back three. The replacements, Theo Dan, Ellis Genge, Will Stewart, George Martin, Billy Vanapola. He returns from his suspension. He's on the bench. And then Ben Youngs, Marcus Smith and Ollie Lawrence. So a bit of rotation from England, but... Not a huge amount. So what does this kind of tell us about where England are? I think it's a selection that in a lot of ways will make sense. Yes, England beat Argentina. And yes, that most likely will be the hardest game in the group. But I think this Sunday is huge for England. I think they have to back it up because, well, for the obvious reasons of you have to keep winning, you need to keep momentum in the World Cup, qualification and all that stuff. But also, I just think England came into the World Cup in such a a negative place in terms of suspensions, in terms of injuries, in terms of results and performances and, and all the noise around the team. And the match against Argentina, for the last week at least, has kind of silenced a lot of those critics. Now, no one's getting ahead of themselves. No one expects England to win the World Cup. But given the side of the draw they're on and the performance that they were able to put in, people are maybe saying, well, OK, we can get through the group. Then we should have a quarter final, which again, whilst it won't be easy, will be winnable and then you're in a semi-final and that probably would be a, a fairly decent return considering where this England team was when they came into the World Cup. So that's why they need to back it up and they need a performance. I don't think they can simply rest on that victory against Argentina. They need to kick on and they need to show that they're improving, I think. I think they answered a lot of questions against Argentina about the fight and spirit in the team and also, most importantly, about their ability to problem solve when they went down to 14 men after a matter of minutes against who what we all thought at least was a good Argentina team. They didn't exactly turn up on the night. But England then had the answers to be able to win the tactical battle and win the game and that was impressive so now kick on against a Japan team people are expecting you to be I think people will want to see England win comfortably and that's not to disrespect J Japan I think it's more a reality of the expectations that are maybe now on England from um, some of their own fans maybe less so much the the outside watching world I don't think they necessarily rate England too high but I just think from a lot of England fans they're thinking okay We've got something to be pleased about. Now show us something more. We want to get behind this team. And that's why I think this is important. And I think that's why I think the game's important. And that's why I think this team selection doesn't have huge of changes like, like we have seen in, in some of the other selections. Just a couple of rotations in there. Obviously, Ellis Genge drops to the bench. Dan Cole has dropped out entirely. Um, and then you've got uh, Will Stewart in there as well with Kyle Sinclair coming in. Let's get on to the back row because I think that's one of the, the most interesting areas of selection from an England point of view. Courtney Laws, Ben Earl, Lewis Ludlam. So Ludlam comes in. I don't think that's a huge surprise, really, given that he came off the bench against Argentina. I think he looks impressive. He's just industrious, isn't he, Lewis Ludlam? I, I love him as a back rower because he's not necessarily the fanciest of, of players or the most exciting or the guy that has the most incredible highlight reel. But I just think he gets through work. He does a lot of the hard yards. He does a lot of ugly stuff. And so I love the fact that he's come into the back row. What's also interesting about it is still no Jack Willis. Now, I don't know if he has some sort of slight injury or anything of that nature, which is keeping him out of the squad. But at this moment in time, maybe it does look like Jack Willis, in terms of the pecking order of this England team, isn't quite as high as some of those other guys. Now, I think he will get an opportunity in the group stage. And when he does, I think he has to take it because there's no question that he could bring a different dimension to this back row. But at this moment in time, I know England haven't been playing well, but I think back row is actually one of the areas where they have quite a few good options. And so I don't really have an issue 
with the ones there. I suppose, if anything, what I would say is I'd maybe rather see Jack Willis on the bench instead of Billy Vunapola. But does that leave England too light in terms of the physicality that Vunapola could bring? But after that suspension, and particularly how well Earl's been playing, Ludlam's been playing as well, how does Vinopola fit into this current England team? It's a long old World Cup. We've still got, what is it, over six weeks, uh, still or six weeks or so still to go. But yeah, I think how, how Vinopola does, how that back row works again is, is going to be something quite fascinating for England. The other point I wanted to mention, one of the most obvious points, but one of the most important from an England point of view is the attack. Yes, they beat Argentina and it came from 27 points from the boot of George Ford, who was absolutely exceptional, slotting drop goals from 50 metres out. I absolutely loved it, but they need to be able to score tries and they aren't scoring enough tries at the moment. Now, it looked like they went some way to fixing their defence against Argentina. I know Argentina were hopeless. They couldn't catch the ball. They didn't put any pressure on England. There will be tougher teams in this tournament who will score tries on England. Putting that to one side, though, England shut them out for most of the game. So you've got to give it a big tick in in the box for that. Now the attack. I want to see something more. You guys will all remember it. In the first half of that game against the the Pumas, where England had an overlap. I can't remember what it was, whether it was four on two or three on two or something like that. And they literally didn't know, or they looked like they didn't know what to do with it. And they ended up just running it out of play. No one really straightened the line. It was a pretty clunky move. It was sort of move that I think even on a, a Saturday or Sunday at amateur level, people would think, well, we didn't really make the most of that opportunity. They have to get their attack looking more dangerous. And it was interesting, actually, watching Uruguay against France on Thursday night because Uruguay, for all the talk of France coming into the game, there was structures in the Uruguayan attack where I was thinking, blimey, England could learn a bit from from this. They had the 12 making absolutely brilliant lines from deep and crashing through, getting them on the front foot. They had threats all over it. England have threats in the back line. They just haven't been able to unleash them whatsoever. And I think they want to, they, they need some sort of attacking presence as they head further into this tournament. I'm not getting ahead of myself. I don't think England aren't going to win the World Cup, but can they get us all excited? Can they can they give a good of a ca- account of themselves? Can they put in some performances on both the defensive and attacking side of the ball that you would think the names on that team sheet are capable of doing? Let's wait and see. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I feel like I maybe had quite a different perspective on the game because I was there last week. I think that always alters it a little bit and I was maybe more positive than a lot of the fans watching at home. Some of you might look at it and say England need to kick the ball away less. I think that's maybe true. I don't have as big an issue with the kicking game if they kick as well as they did against Argentina because it was an area of the game that England dominated and was a major reason for why they won that game and they won it so comfortably. So if they can execute a good kicking game, again, I don't have as much of an issue with it as some people. I would quite like to see them probably stop the kicks when they have attacking ball in the opponent's 22. Maybe we can just see Ford going back in, in the pocket for a drop goal. Let's see if that tactic continues. It wouldn't surprise me, actually. It wouldn't surprise me at all if England do opt for that and, and use it as a pretty good way to keep the, the scoreboard ticking over. So there's a lot going on in this team. I've only touched on a few different areas. You can drop a comment and let me know what you make of the team, the makeup of the team, what you're hoping to see and expect from England uh, this coming weekend. That'll do it for now from Nice on the ground in France. I look forward to reading your comments. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel as well. And I'll see you in the next one.